Hello, David here with Entertechnics, and today I'm going to be going over Pyroptics image processing software version 1.0. Specifically, I'll be going over the slag indexing version of the software. Some of the features found in slag indexing are timed and manual video recording, timed and manual snapshots, five custom color lookup tables, automatic disk management, full screen mode, timestamp overlay and camera label overlay, five customizable overlays, adjustable aspect ratio in full screen mode, brightness, contrast, and gamma adjustments, frame averaging, histogram equalization, remote iris and focus controls if you have the optional hardware, an optional Entertechnics watermark overlay, automated time-lapse reporting options, eight user-defined zones that measure buildup, chart display for each zone and all zones combined, a custom chart length, zones can be mapped to 4 to 20 milliamp outputs, zone data is also output to a CSV file, custom thresholds for each zone that trigger alerts, and a user-defined mask for image processing. Let's jump right into the software and talk about our front panel. You'll see here on the left hand side, we have a colorized image of the live image. Right next to that, we have our selected frame, which is the frame we use for all of our detection algorithms. And right next to that, we have the actual detected frame, which is a binary image of slag versus not slag. So all the slag is seen in white and everything else is seen in black. Next to that, we have our zone data, which shows you the output for each zone in a percentage. So each zone is defined by the rectangles we see there on the selected frame. And the percentage we see is the amount of white pixels that are found inside of that zone. Below that, we have our chart display down here with tabs that represent each zone. And as you can see, there's a little red line for a threshold there. And that's what's triggering that red indicator up in the zone data. And we'll discuss that more in a second. We also have a combined slag tab, which shows all the zones in one display. Moving on to the buttons found at the top of the program here. We have our full screen button, which goes in and out of full screen mode, which just displays the live image across the whole screen. We also maintain our zone indicators there on the right hand side. To exit this, you simply click on the image or hit the escape key. Uh, we also have our settings button found right below it, which will open up the settings menu and we'll discuss this more in a minute. Next to that, we have our capture image button, which takes a snapshot of the live image. We have our auto capture image, which takes a time snapshot of the image. Our record video button, which records the live video. Below that, we have our record segments button, which records live video in timed segments. And we'll discuss that more when we get to the settings discussion. Next, we have our about button, which you can see contains some version information and some contact information. You can also access our manual here via PDF. Um, and as you can see, the manual contains pretty much everything we're going over in this video, a little bit more in depth even. So if you need to, feel free to consult this. And finally, we have our exit button, which closes out of the program. You can also close out of the program by hitting the X on the top right part of the window. So let's move on to our settings page and discuss what we have available there. You'll see here on the left hand side we have available network cameras. And this is a list that's populated every few seconds based on what cameras uh, the program finds on the network. Um, right above we have active channel which defines which of those cameras we're looking at for the live image. Next to that we have our image capture settings. These settings control where and how we record video and images. Inside of this, we have record interval, which defines the interval that is used for record segments. We have clip duration, which defines the duration of the clip used both for record video and record video segments. We have snapshot rate, which defines the interval used for time snapshots. We have our video codec, which defines the codec we use for video recording. We have the data storage file path, which defines the path location used to store all of the data generated by the software. The content saved to this file path will be managed by the hard drive management tools built into the software and we'll cover that a little bit more later on. We have the open video folder which opens the location that the videos are currently being saved to. And finally we have our open snapshot folder which opens the location that the snapshots are currently being saved to. Next let's take a look at the image manipulation controls and we can move this window out of the way if we want to get a better look at the live image while we're doing this. Um, so as you can see we have a control called image manipulation which enables all these functions. And we can adjust the brightness, the contrast, and the gamma. Um, and if you do find settings that are undesirable, you can always hit the reset to defaults button to get back to the original state. Um, we have image correction, which tries to equalize the histogram of the image. We have frame averaging, which when enabled, averages the last user-defined number of frames together. Um, and that number is defined by the frames to av control right below this. We also have image colorization, and here we have five different color lookup tables that we can choose from. I'll quickly run through them. Let's move on to the live image settings. 
We have chart grid lines, which enables the grid lines for the chart on the front panel. Record with overlays, which when enabled, the overlays will be applied to the images when they are being saved, both through recording video and saving snapshots. And the overlays are simply anything extra we have on top of the live image. So right now we're displaying an Entertechnics logo as well as the timestamp down there. Those are both considered overlays. And so if this was enabled and we were recording video, it would save those to those videos as well as snapshots if we take those. Below that, we have display zones on full screen. And what this will do is when you go into full screen mode, it will either show or hide the indicators that we saw on the right that display the zone data. So right now we have them hidden. If we turn that back on, they will be displayed when we go to full screen mode. Below that, we have display enter technics watermark. And this will just show or hide that watermark we see there on the bottom left. Below that, we have display camera label overlay and display timestamp overlay. And both of these overlays just display a string onto the live image. The timestamp simply shows the date and time, whereas the camera label displays a custom string that the user defines down where we see the camera label control. Below that, we have stretch image on full screen, and this just distorts the image out to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio as opposed to the typical 4 by 3, which is what our camera actually is. So while you do get an image that covers the entire monitor, uh, it does distort the image a bit. Below that, we have display live image overlays, and this is just displaying the zones, so the rectangles that we have drawn onto the selected frame. This is an option to either hide or show those onto the live image. And below that, we have display custom overlays, and the custom overlays are user-drawn overlays, and I'll do a quick example of that. By clicking on the Draw Custom Overlays button, we can bring up a window where the user is allowed to draw up to five different shapes and apply them to the live image. So I'll go ahead and draw just a quick little line right here. And you can see this carries over to the live image and we can choose either to display it or hide it. Next, we'll be going over some of the more interesting features found inside the software, that is the time-lapse settings. Before we go into what each of these options are inside the settings page, I wanna quickly go over just what exactly these time-lapse reports are. The software offers the option to automatically stitch together images to create a typical time-lapse video. On top of that, we also offer the option to combine those images with the data that's generated, giving us a unique look at the entire day's events in the matter of a few minutes. We'll take a look at an example of that here in a few minutes, but first let's go over what each of these options do. Under Zone Display, we have the option to show or hide each one of our zones. And this only pertains to the Create Time-Lapse Report function, which will generate the report with the data combined. Under Basic Options, we have Daily Time Lapse Enabled, which enables the program to automatically generate the desired time lapse videos each morning at 12.05 a.m. for the previous day's data. We have Hide Grid, which hides the grid on the time lapse report. Create Snapshot Time Lapse, which creates a time lapse consisting of the raw snapshots. Create Selected Frames Time Lapse, which creates a time lapse consisting of the selected frames. Add Overlays to Selected Frames, which adds the overlays used for processing to the selected frames on the time lapse report. Create Detected Frames Time Lapse, which creates a time lapse consisting of the detected frames, and Add Overlays to Detected Frames, which adds the overlays used for processing to the detected frames on the time lapse report. And finally, we have Create Time Lapse Report, which creates a time lapse video report that shows the detected and selected frames as well as the zone data with the tracking timeline. And we'll see an example of that here in a second. Under Advanced Options, we have Frame Rate, which is the playback rate of the videos. Percent of images to include, which is the percent of images captured the previous day that will be used in the video. Reducing this effectively increases the speed of the time lapse. Running average, which is the number of data points to be included in the running average that is applied to the data charts. Open time lapse folder, which will take you to the location all the videos are being stored. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of the complete report. Uh, the data itself isn't too interesting because this is on a test machine where we're just playing a looped video over and over again, as you can see, but and let's also take a look at the just regular snapshot time-lapse. As you can see here, same thing. This is with the overlays being saved on there. So that gives you a picture of what these time-lapses are and how they work. Under manual settings, we have a couple of grayed out indicators, and these are just not implemented yet in the software. So at a future date, they will be used, but for now, they're not available. Below that, we have run time-lapse generator, which manually runs the time-lapse features. So typically they'll run at 12.05 a.m. if they're set up to be automatic. And if they're not and you wanna do it manually, this is the button you would use to do that. Below that we have our disk management. And so in here we have threshold and reduce to. And so the way this is set up right now, we have 85% under threshold and 30% reduced to. So how this would work is once, once our hard drive 
and the hard drive being defined as the hard drive where the data storage is going to, uh, which is defined under basic settings. Uh, so once that reaches 85%, uh, the program will trigger an event which will go through all of the data that's stored in that location and delete the oldest part of the data until we get down to that 30%. Uh, typically, we would set it somewhere at 85% as a threshold and maybe something more like 60 or 50% to the reduced to. Under the Output Settings tab, we have the option to enable or disable our analog outputs as well as our digital outputs. So for our analog outputs, that would be our 4 to 20 milliamp outputs, which does require optional hardware to do this. Under analog output settings, we have our eight zones shown down here. And each zone you'll notice corresponds to a milliamp value. That is the current milliamp output value that is being sent to the module if it's active. And right now we can see that it is not active. I have the analog output connection uh, with a red indicator indicating that it is not connected. Uh, green would mean that it is. We also have on the status saying that there is an error. Um, we have the analog output module, which defines the module we're using, the AOIO COM port, which is the virtual COM port that needs to be assigned to this. We have the AOIP address, which is the IP address of that module. We also have the option to enable our digital outputs. Um, and this requires optional hardware as well for our remote iris and focus controls. Um, you have the option to enter in the Digital output module IP address, which needs to match the module. We also have the steps per signal, which is the amount of movement that the iris and focus do each time the event is triggered. We have the digital output module connection status, which displays whether or not you are correctly connected to that module out in the field. And right now I have, I'm not connected to one, so we see a red indicator here. If I was, it would be green. And then we have the actual iris and focus controllers. So you can see adjust the iris to the left or the right, and the focus to the left or the right. Next, we'll discuss the slag indexing settings. So a lot of these settings I'm gonna kinda of gloss over because they really shouldn't be modified. Um, and if you want more information, you can find them in our manual. Um, so up the top here, we have the algorithm options, which the majority of these uh, really shouldn't be touched unless you know exactly what's going on with the software. Under options, we have some more features that really shouldn't be touched unless you're familiar with how the algorithm works, except for chart width which just defines the x-axis on the chart on the front panel. And finally, we have our zones thresholds, which each zone has a certain threshold that you can set. And once that threshold is met, uh, it will trigger an alarm that causes the indicators to flash red. Uh, so that pretty much wraps up our discussion for the slag indexing version of Pyroptics image processing software. If you have any other questions or comments or looking for more information, feel free to contact us at support at entertechnics.com or check out our website at www.entertechnics.com. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.